In this video, I'll give you a brief walkthrough on the Click Designs dashboard. By the end of this video, you should be more familiar with the software and with different buttons on the interface. Prior to getting started, you will need to have an active Click Designs account. Once you log in, you will see the navigation menu here on top, and that will allow you to browse through different sections. Depending on your level, you may not see all the options here, so let's go through each button one by one. If you click here on the template section, you will see the different done-for-you templates that are available for you to use. This is a mixture of different categories from different sections as well. You will see the different buttons here called Funnels, Logos, Box Shots, Covers, Sheets, Mockups, Bundles, Illustrations, Annotations, and Backgrounds. We will then discuss all these buttons here, but we will just resume first talking about the navigation menu links. Next, under My Designs, if you click on that link, all the designs that you've created will be shown under the My Design section. Next, under Custom, if you click on that, you have two options here. You have My Device Bundles and you have My Custom Bundles. So the My Bundle section will show all the done-for-you bundles or all the bundles that you've edited using the different wireframes or different templates. The My Device Bundles are all the device bundles that you created from scratch or the wireframes that you put together with the devices. The My Custom Bundles have different types of wireframes put together to create a custom bundle. Now that we're done with the navigation options, let's go back to the dashboard. Below the navigation menu is a banner that will allow you to start creating designs with a few clicks. You will also see the latest graphics added on the software system. And also below that, you will also see the latest designs that you've created. On the top banner, you will see some shortcuts to create designs, plus the view all button and the start from scratch button. Now that we're inside the design editor, let's talk about each feature. Let's start with the text option right here. You can either add a new text layer if you want to add more words, or you can edit the existing text with the existing font right here. You can see on this section that you can edit the text. You can edit the alignment, aligned left, centered, or right. You can also edit the text color. You also have other text options. You can bold it, you can italicize, you can underline, you can strike through, you could overline, you could uppercase and lowercase also the text. Then you could edit the font size right here by adjusting it. And then you could choose the font family that you prefer right here. We have lots of nice fonts that you could choose from. Then you could also choose the line height that you would like for your font. Next, you could also make the letters tighter or you could select the type of letter spacing that you would like. Then you could choose the angle of your text. Right after that, you could choose the opacity of your text as well, or your color. Then you could add shadow to your text. You could choose the color of the shadow that you would like to add. Then you could have a horizontal offset shadow or a vertical offset shadow. You could also blur the shadow a little bit. You could add a gradient color to your text. You could also adjust the gradient angle of your text. We have other layer options right here for the text. First, you could bring it forward. Next, you could send it backwards. You can center it horizontally. You could center it vertically. You could duplicate your text, flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. You could lock your text, group and ungroup, and also fit it to screen. So this is now, let's try to center it horizontally. And there it is. Let's try to center it vertically. And that's what's gonna happen. Let's try to duplicate the text. There, it's duplicated. Let me just delete this duplicate right here. And then let's go ahead and flip it horizontally. Let's flip it vertically. Let's lock the text there. We can't move it around. And let's try to group them or ungroup them there. So they're all grouped together. So now I can move them all. Now let's go to the next option here, which is the image option. So on the image option, you can upload your own image. You can drag and drop your image here from your local drive and find your images right here. You could click any of the images that you've uploaded and then just stick it into your canvas. There you go. So I'm going to delete that. Aside from that, you can click on search image. You can look for any image that you would like from Pixabay. Type in your keyword, select and it will be loaded in your canvas there. Then you could crop your image very easily, just like that. 
You could drag it. You could change the angle of your image. You could also change the opacity of your image. You could choose some image filters right here. You could add any image filter that you would like to make your image look unique. I'll just choose none. You could also generate a color palette for your filter so that you could see what types of colors appear here on the filter that you use and on the image. So I didn't use any filters, so the color palette that was generated came directly from the image. You could add a shadow on your image and obviously customize the type of shadow that you would like. You could adjust the offset of the shadow. You could blur the shadow. You could also circle your image, turn it on and off. You could add a reflection to your image. You could also adjust the opacity of the reflection and the position of the reflection as well. Then you have the same layer options that you've seen on your text layer, which is to bring it forward, send it backwards, center it horizontally, center it vertically, duplicate it, flip it horizontally, flip it vertically, lock in your elements, group and ungroup your images for your elements and to fit it to screen. Now, to make things simpler, you can also use this option here. It's the grid option so that you know if it's actually in the center or not. So that will help you have a better idea when you are dragging or dropping the elements and ensuring that all the elements appear in the right track. Then you can easily turn it off. Then on the background option, you have here a solid color background. So you could choose if you would like a solid color or you could choose if you would like a gradient background. For you to see things, um, this is how it looks like. There. And then you can see a little bit of the gradient angles changing, right? Aside from that, you could also use an image background, the same thing as I showed you earlier on the image selection. You can drag and drop your image right here and select from my images, or you can search an image from Pixabay and stick it in as your background. Right after that, we have the shapes option. On the shapes option, you could choose a shape that you would like, type in the keyword that you would like, and then select. Click it and load it on your canvas, or you could clear your selection and look for the particular shape or look for a particular keyword that you would like based on the different sections that are here under your shapes category. If you have your shape selected, you could also modify the color of the shape. I have a color code here when I clicked it, so I can copy the color code. I can click on the shape right here and I can copy and paste the color code right there. So they are uniform. We have the same color code of the shape there. That's how it looks like. So you could select whatever shape that you like and then put it on the canvas. This is also a shape, as you can see. It's been added here in the canvas, but it looks really cool, right? So I will remove that. Right after that, we have the icons. It works exactly the same as shapes. You have a wide range of icons to choose from and whatever icon that you would like to add, you could type in a keyword right here to search for an icon or you could just choose from what you can see. So if you prefer or if you see an icon that attracts your attention, all you have to do is click on it and then adjust it, add it to your canvas and then make it bigger or smaller. On the icon selection, you can also adjust the colors of some of the sections of your icons. See the building color is changing right there. Then you could also adjust the angle of your icon, adjust the opacity, and then again, the same layer options that I've talked about earlier with your text and also your images. Next one is elements. It works exactly the same as your icons and shapes. So all you have to do is just type in a keyword that you would like under your element section, click on enter, and then add your element to your canvas right there. Then you could crop your image or crop your element, adjust the angle of that image or that arrow, adjust the opacity as well, add image filters to your element. You could also generate a color palette based on the element that you've added. You could add a shadow, you could circle the element like that, and then you have all the layer options right here. You could also add a reflection on your element like that. Aside from that, same thing, you could adjust the opacity of the reflection, you could adjust the position of the reflection, and then you have your other layer options right here. Next, you have your illustrations. Your illustrations are vectors, 
And same thing, you can type in a keyword that you would like for your illustrations. Whatever illustration that you would like, you could click on it and then you could add it into your canvas. Then you would see different colors that are popping up on the left side. So what you could do is adjust the colors and the illustration that you've added will have its colors customized and adjusted accordingly. As you can see, the colors are changing as I click. This can match the background of your canvas or your theme. Then you could adjust the angle, obviously, adjust the opacity of your illustration, add a shadow, adjust the color of the shadow of your illustration, adjust the positioning of the shadow, blurring the shadow, and again, you have your layer options right here. Next, let's go to the My Design section. Under the My Design section, this is where all your designs are saved. So after you use a template or after you start from scratch and then you save it as your own design, this is where all your designs will be placed. So let's just say I like this one based on my design. There, it's a book. I can do all the settings that I would like. I can crop the image again. I can adjust the angle of the image. I can adjust the opacity. I could add image filters. I could generate a new color palette for that one. I could add a shadow. I could circle the image. Aside from circling the image, I could also adjust the border color and then border width. And I could also add a reflection, adjusting the opacity and the position. And lastly, I could use my other layer options here below as I mentioned earlier today. Then I will click on my templates. My templates are the templates that I have created in my account. So they're different from my designs because my designs are the designs that I've created that are outputs or save designs. Now these are templates that I've created that can be reused as box shots. So let's just say I have this particular template that I created as a cover, for example, it can also be used as a box shot. So this is how it looks like. It covered the entire canvas. Lastly, we have the template section. And on the template section, these are the templates that are professionally made by Click Designs. Again, it works the same way as your templates. The difference is it's just more unique and obviously you have a lot more to choose from. If you choose any particular template right here, it will overwrite or it will go on top of your existing image right here or your existing design. Like what I did earlier with the makeup template, so whatever I click, it will just overwrite or it will just cover the entire design. After adding some final touches to my box shot, now I'm ready to preview. Once I preview, it looks like this. So obviously this is the front and then this is the side. When I am happy with the front cover, all I have to do is click on save and exit. And now I could go to the spine. I could go ahead and edit the spine by hovering my mouse over and clicking on edit. It functions exactly the same way as how I showed earlier. Once I'm happy with my design, all I have to do is click on preview. And then if I think this is good enough, then I can click on save and exit. Now I have my video box shot. I can now export this in PNG format, JPEG format, or PDF. I can add a watermark when I export. I can add a shadow when I export. And I can also add a reflection here at the bottom. When I'm ready, all I have to do is click on export and it will be downloaded into my local drive. Then I'll click on save again. Right after clicking on save, I will click on exit. I'm now here at my designs dashboard and all I have to do is click on these three dots right here and click on preview just to confirm that this is the design that I've already created, the box shot that I made and the box shot that I've downloaded. This time I have a different example because I'd like to show you how you can resize your canvas. You can resize all your canvases for all the designs that you'll be creating on Click Designs, except for box shots, covers, sheets, and mock-ups. To do this, all you have to do is click the resize button right here, and then enter the width that you would like to use, and then enter the height that you would like for your canvas. Right after that, click on resize canvas. You will notice that your canvas size became bigger, and I will just zoom it out just to double check. After resizing your canvas, then you can adjust everything and also the image and the background. Once you're done with all your designs, all you have to do is just click on exit after you save it. This will bring you back to your My Design dashboard so that you can see all the designs that you've created. This is the box shot that I've edited and now this is the new design that I've made. And that's it.
We're done with our design editor video.